Welcome to Learning Kitchen Live, episode 12. My name is Jessica Birch. I'm one of the dietitians at Community Servings. As you can see, I'm working from home, so welcome to my kitchen. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to balance blood sugars with balanced meals, and all while performing the death-defying feat of creating a meal in half an hour. Today's recipe is turkey quinoa stuffed peppers. And it's a little bit different than a usual stuffed pepper recipe, at least in the way that I think about um, stuffed peppers, because I'm gonna cook all of the components separately and then combine them at the end, which makes the recipe go by really, really quickly and nobody's gonna know the difference. Uh, we're gonna be focusing on lean proteins, whole grains, antioxidant rich vegetables, uh, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope, I hope that uh, whoever tunes in really enjoys this. So um, let's get started. But the first thing that I wanna mention before we really start cooking is the importance of balanced blood sugar. So I think a lot of the time people think blood sugar, oh, diabetes, this isn't really going to affect me, or maybe it does. Um, diabetes is extremely prevalent in the United States. One out of every 10 Americans has diabetes. That's a pretty staggering number to consider. Um, diabetes is a disease that affects our body's ability to absorb sugar from our blood. And over a long period of time, that can result in a lot of medical complications. That one in 10 number is pretty scary, but what's actually even more terrifying, if you ask me, and I promise I'm not all doom and gloom, is the fact that one out of three, so this is one of those scenarios where they say, you know, look to your left, look to your right, one of those three people has prediabetes. Um, and so the thing with prediabetes is it's not diabetes. The other thing, and this is the good news, the non doom and gloom situation, is that prediabetes um, is either uh, reversible or you can stop it right where it is to uh, stop the progression to diabetes. And the way we do that is using food as medicine. So remembering um, and putting an effort into thinking about how we can balance our meals to keep our blood sugars more stable will result in uh, huge health benefits uh, in the long run. So with that being said, I'm gonna talk about blood sugars more as we're going, but let's actually start cooking something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to start by showing my ingredients because I think this is a really good way to kind of think about stuff. So if you see here, I've got um, my turkey, I've got my quinoa, and I've got a whole lot of vegetables. Half of my um, ingredients here are vegetables, and we're gonna talk about why that's important um, right before I start cooking. So when we talk about balanced meals, oh, let me just readjust this, there we go. Ah. Uh, when we talk about balanced meals, this is what we're going for. You can see my plate. So we wanna make half of our meal, some sort of non-starchy vegetable, and that means this section does not include potatoes, it does not include, include peas, corn, parsnips, winter squashes, sweet potatoes, those starchy veggies we tend to love, right? And then the other half of the plate is split between something that gives us protein, that kind of reddish section that's not really showing up, up very well, and a, a starch or a grain or a pasta or a carb, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to put my, my demo aside there. So in the United States and a lot of places, um, we tend to like the starchy foods the best. Those are the ones that we fill up our plate with and then stack the other things on top. And that's where we run into trouble when it comes to balancing blood sugars because those starchy foods, the rice, the potatoes, the pasta, the bread, they're all good for us. They all have a place in our diet, um, but really big portions of them is where we run into trouble with blood sugars. So when I was showing the ingredients, I like to kind of approach meals as, if I start with making half of what I'm putting into a meal a vegetable, then I'm setting myself up for success, right? Um, if you look at what you're preparing or if you think about what you're preparing and you know right off the bat, well, actually, most of the stuff, most of the ingredients going into this meal are starch-based, can you make a little adjustment? It's hard if you're not used to eating half every meal of vegetables to make that shift, but you can make small adjustments over time. If your entire meal is a carb um, or a starch, uh, can you make it a little bit less, add a little bit more vegetable in there? And over time, these little tiny changes will make a really big difference. All right, so we'll keep going on that theme as we're going, but let's actually cook something. I've got my oven preheated. 
uh, to 350 and I've pre-sliced some of my peppers. So I'm just gonna stick them face down on here. Um, and then I'll show you how I sliced the peppers for this recipe. Um, and I'll just make some room. So pepper, right? This is the tough part. You know, you really need crazy knife skills for this. So I'm just gonna cut right through the center. And then I'm gonna put my knife over here because I don't think I need it anymore. You got your seeds and your stem. We're gonna just pull the stem out and we'll leave a little bit of a hole in the pepper. That's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, we're still gonna be able to stuff it. And then I'm gonna pull the, um, the seeds, the, I don't know what these things are called. I wanna say they're called veins, but that seems weird to me for some reason right now. Um, but the, the white part out as much as possible so that you end up with your, your nice yummy pepper to stuff. Stick that on my pan and get my other one ready. Okay. So this is a really yummy dish for this cooler weather. I know we're gonna have some really cool weather in Boston at least over the weekend. Um, fall has arrived. Oh dear, I'm not ready. Are you? <laughs> All right, so peppers on an oven and we're just gonna let these bake for 15 to 20 minutes while we start preparing everything else so I'm gonna move the rest of my ingredients aside um, so I can get to my burners so oops. we're gonna start with the quinoa um, so quinoa is our whole grain. I like to toast quinoa a little bit before I add the water. Um, this lets it get more of a, um, a nutty flavor. It adds an extra layer of yumminess to the dish in general. So I'm, I got my pan a little bit hot. I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And let that heat up a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna add in, I smashed all my garlic in one thing, but about one tea, or one clove's worth of garlic. Uh, and I just want, oh, it's starting to sizzle. Just want that to saute a little bit. Um, you don't want the garlic to burn. You want it to just get golden and very aromatic. Um, make some extra yumminess happen in this kitchen today. So, I'm gonna give that one more second and then I'm gonna just dump my quinoa directly into here. It's not cooked in any way. Um, straight quinoa. And then I'm gonna just stir it for a minute and toast. So, the quinoa, as I said, is our starch. We want to try to make a quarter of our meals starch um, or carb, whatever you want to call it, um, for a couple of reasons. One, we need these foods because they're what give us the glucose in our diet. They're what power our brains. But if we get more than we need um, of anything really, but these foods in particular, our blood sugars go up really high very quickly. What we um, or in Ideally, we would pick a whole grain. So I've talked about whole grains in some previous classes and I know that Beth and Belle have as well. Um, the whole grains mean that you get the entire grain all at once. So you're, you're not missing out on any of the fiber, any of the vitamins, any of the nutri or, um, minerals, any of the protein. You get everything all at once. When we're eating a grain, um, let me give this one more stir. Uh, when we're eating starches, if we choose a whole grain, all those extra components that are involved actually slow down the digestive process. And so the, the carb or the glucose that we get from these foods goes into our bloodstream more slowly. So instead of, for example, if you were gonna eat white rice, um, you barely have to chew that, right? It goes into your bloodstream right away, your blood sugars go through the roof and then they drop. 
If we're trying to keep balanced blood sugars over a longer period of time, if you have a whole grain, your body takes longer to break that down, and instead it enters your bloodstream in little spurts, so it keeps things more at an even level. So we wanna to try to pick whole grains as often as possible. So that can be something like the quinoa, that can be brown rice, a whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, and again, if you're not used to these things, that's okay, try them. See which ones you like and see what you can do to combine these things into your regular diet. So this is nice and toasted. If you could smell it, it has this yummy nutty flavor, or aroma, I should say, and I am going to add in my water, which I forgot to measure, so hold on one second. Toasted my quinoa, some garlic and olive oil. I'm gonna drop in a bay leaf for another layer of flavor without adding um, salt, because we're always trying to find ways to cut back on salt. I am going to actually move this to another burner so you can see what I'm doing next. Bring it to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. And this should be done in about 15 minutes, which is great. So, if you're just joining now, my name is Jessica. This is Learning Kitchen Live, episode 12. We're talking about balancing blood sugars through balanced meals. And today we're making turkey quinoa stuffed peppers. I've got my peppers in the oven. I've got my quinoa started. And so now we're gonna move on to the turkey part. So, let me heat up my pan burner is my tricky burner. It always gets really hot really quick, so I have to pay attention, extra close attention, so I don't burn something while I'm teaching this class. Um, all right, so at the beginning, I showed all of my ingredients, and we talked about that balanced plate, and we talked about thinking about um, what you're putting into the dishes that you're making so that you're, are, you're starting from a balanced position to begin with. If we start with lots of vegetables going into our meal, we're setting ourselves up for success, right? So I'm actually gonna start my um, meat, my protein component of this dish with vegetables. So I'm getting my uh, pan heated up. It's thinking about it, it's getting there. I can feel a little warmth coming. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add my oil, about two, two teaspoons of olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And then I'm gonna add in two carrots that I've already lovely chopped. And this recipe, um, if you're interested, will be posted on the Facebook page at the end of the class um, in the comments section below. And um, I included carrots and onion. I didn't actually have any onion in my house, it turned out. So, um, I'm substituting in shallot, which is, this, you know, in the same family, has a very similar flavor, a little bit stronger flavor, um, and it, but it cooks a little bit faster than onions. So I'm gonna start with the carrots by themselves and then add in my shallot in a, in a minute. So, let's see, get this heat right. I want these to start cooking down a little bit. So why all the vegetables? Right? Why do we want to try to make half of our meal some sort of non-starchy vegetable? And remember that non-starchy vegetables are any vegetable that you can imagine that's out there with the exception of potatoes, parsnips, sweet potatoes, cassava, manioc, yucca, depending on who you're talking to, what you call it, um, the winter squashes, pumpkin, all of those are considered starchy vegetables. So those would fall into the same category as rice or pasta, so they're gonna be a quarter of your meal instead of that half of the meal um, goal, or portion. So why non-starchy vegetables? Why do we wanna have so many of them? First, they are full of vitamins and minerals, phytonutrients, lots of things that keep our bodies very happy and very healthy. 
So the more of them that we have, the better, okay? The second is, is the reason is that these foods are carbs. They do give us starch. They do give us blood, or the, um, the glucose that makes our blood sugar go up, but very, very small amounts. So if you can make a big portion of your meal something that gives you very small amounts of glucose, that's gonna be a really good thing, right? Because you're getting it from other places, so you wanna balance it out. Um, the other thing is that uh, non-starchy vegetables are full of fiber. Fiber acts as a broom, it sweeps our body clean, it can reduce the amount of cholesterol that we have in our bloodstream. Fiber also makes us feel full for a long time, and as I was saying with the whole brains that are full of fiber, um, how that helps to slow down the digestive process, and so it releases glucose into our blood more slowly. If you have a lot of fiber-rich foods in the meal that you're eating, that puts extra fiber into your digestive system, and so that means that the foods that you're eating digest more slowly, and the glucose that is going from your digestive system into your blood goes in in little spurts, so that it keeps everything more even instead of these skyrocketing um, blood sugars that result in a plummet later. All good reasons to try to include more vegetables in your diet, right? So, my carrots are, ooh, yum. They're starting to get a little bit golden on one side, so I'm gonna give them a little shake, and I'm gonna add in my shallots, or onion. Now, um, I chopped these up pretty small because they're going to go into my filling for my peppers. Um, but if chopping is not for you, you can use a cheese grater, you can use a Cuisinart or a blender. You can find a small person that might normally be in school but is now home and you might trust with some sort of chopping implement and have them cut up some vegetables for you. And I used um, carrot and onion, but you know, the sky's the limit. Whatever you have available, celery, uh, cauliflower, uh, tomatoes, any sort of greens, broccoli, chop off whatever you've got and throw it in. Um, make this dish your own. Pick the things that you like and fold them, fold them in. Same thing goes for spices. I picked a certain spice one that we'll talk about in a second, but if that's not the type of flavoring that you like, put in what you like. Got to make something that you enjoy eating, right? All right, so I'm going to give this one more minute. I'm going to take a look or a peek, a peek at our quinoa to see how it's doing. Oh, it's bubbling away. You can smell that bay leaf. Yum, yum, yum. And let's see how our peppers are doing. They smell amazing. I don't know about you, but I love the smell of roasted or grilled peppers. Um, just a little side note about peppers. So one bell pepper um, has the amount of vitamin C that you would need in an entire day. So if you eat one bell pepper, you're gonna you need all your vitamin C needs, right? Um, vitamin C is a really wonderful antioxidant. It's really good for our immune system. So if you can include bell peppers in your diet, great. And the other nice thing about bell peppers right now, at least in Boston area in the Northeast, is that they are in season. So you can, well, I don't know about farmer's markets with COVID and everything, but they're very more, or much more widely available from um, about the end of August until um, and middle of October or so um, when the frost sets in. But now's your time to stock up on bell peppers and enjoy them. Okay, shallots cooked down. Carrots are getting nice and um, softened. So I'm going to now add my, the rest of my garlic that I didn't put in my quinoa. And, mm, there's nothing better than the smell of sauteing garlic. If you ask me. <laughs> Just makes everything feel better in the world. All right. So with garlic, you just want it to saute for a few moments. It's very high in oil, and so if you leave it in the pan too quick, it might, or for too long, it will burn. We don't want that. Okay, so now, turkey. So if turkey is not your thing, 
um, you can substitute in, I'm going to just spread it out evenly throughout my pan, and then finish my thought. Okay, so if you're vegetarian, um, lentils works really well in this dish, as do beans. Um, tempeh would be a great thing, saipan. Um, I don't know about tofu. I'm, I should love tofu. I'm a dietitian. It's not my favorite thing, and I don't feel like tofu would work super great in this, but give it a try if you like tofu. Um, I think lentils and tempeh would be fantastic. But remember, those, um, those um, plant-based proteins are high in carbs, and so you just want to think about how you're balancing it out. What they, they certainly, that's not a reason not to eat them. You just want to make sure that you're getting a good portion of the non-starchy vegetables to go along with it. So before we start talking about protein a little bit more, I'm going to add my spices. I don't know. Can you see? Let's tilt it a little bit. There's my, my, my uh, sauteing turkey. And I'm going to add the spices on top of this. And the reason is, is so then it will kind of incorporate into the meat. So that was um, two teaspoons of cumin and chili powder and some oregano. As I said before though, pick spices that you like. This is kind of like a southwestern spice blend. Um, I think it goes really nicely with this dish. But you can go an Italian route and include basil, um, more garlic powder. You can do, I don't know, any spice mix out there. You pick what you like. Put it in. If you like it, it's going to taste good. And if you, it tastes good and you like it, you're going to eat it, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to work my um, wooden spoon here just to blend in my spices a little bit more. I want to make sure that they are incorporated into every bite. If you notice, I didn't actually use any salt, but I used a lot of other things to flavor the food. And that's just my um, perpetual attempt to reduce the amount of salt that's in the food that I eat and my family eats, because we get so much salt from so many other things that if you can avoid putting it in meals that you're preparing yourself, um, you're setting yourself up for success. And we've talked about in the past that too much salt in your diet can raise your blood pressure. We don't want that. Think of food as medicine. Remember, we can cut back on some things um, to improve our health. Why not do it? Plus, I'm using some cheese at the end, and there's tons of salt and cheese, so that's going to be my salt component. Okay. Let me just look at my peppers real quick. Still looking good. Let me just peek at my, my quinoa. Oh, getting there, almost done. I'm gonna take the lid off of this, actually. All right. Ooh, you're gonna get wafted with steam. I'll move this back without burning myself, hopefully. Let's do this. So, why, so we talked about vegetarian options to swap in if you do not like, um, or if you don't eat meat. Alternatively, if you're trying to increase the vegetarian options or plant-based meals in your diet, you can try some of those um, lentils or tempeh or beans in this dish as well. Very, very yummy. Um, but if you're going for meat, I would really encourage you to choose a lean protein such as turkey or chicken because um, they're lower in saturated fats, uh, they're better for our heart, they make our body happier, right? And if you're used to eating a lot of those higher fat proteins like beef and pork, making a switch in one or two dishes can make a really big difference in the long run. When it comes to balanced meals, we want to try to make sure that we're including a protein option, or no, 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 well, yeah, an option. We're including some sort of protein in our meals because that helps to balance out the meal, right? So I have been talking about how the starch 
and um, the vegetables both give us carbs and how we want to try to balance that out because those carbs break down into glucose and that glucose is what makes our blood sugars go up. Protein like um, beef and pork and turkey and chicken and eggs and fish, lamb, goat, I think that covers the gamut, at least the things that I can think of right now. Um, those, all of those foods don't have any carb in them at all. So including them in our meals um, helps to balance our, our blood sugars because you're including a component that will help you feel full, will give you lots of nutrients that you need, but is not going to make your blood sugars go up. Like fiber, protein foods actually slow down the digestive um, process. And so again, that's another thing that helps to keep your blood sugars more stable. If you think about it, if you put just one thing into your stomach, so if you just ate a bowl of rice, that's one thing that your body needs to break down, one thing that your body needs to think about when it's digesting. So it's like, oh, one process, get that done, bloodstream, here you go, blood sugars go up. If there's protein and carbs, so if you have that bowl of rice and you added some turkey, for example, to it, um, now we have two things that your body has to address, protein food and that carb food. So now we have to, the, your body slows down the process of digestion so your blood sugar doesn't go up quite as fast, right? So remembering to include some sort of protein in your meals is going to help to make sure that your blood sugars stay more stable. All right, so if you are just joining in now, welcome. <laughs> we are almost, well, we're getting close to the end. Um, I don't want to jinx myself. Um, but we're almost done with the, the main cooking process. Um, this is Learning Kitchen Live, episode 12. I'm Jessica, one of the dietitians at Community Servings, and today we have been talking about how to balance your blood sugars through balanced meals. And we are making a turkey quinoa stuffed pepper. And I'm going to take my peppers out of the oven so I can smell them. They look like they're still totally um, uncooked, raw. That's the word I was looking for, raw. But in a, just a second, this, as they cool off from coming out of the heat, um, they're going to start to wrinkle. And so then we're going to know that they're nice and roasted. So I'm going to just stick them right here. My quinoa is just about done. My turkey is just about done. We're going to combine all of these things. Let's see. Oh, yeah. This is one of the great things about quinoa is it cooks so fast. Um, so not only is it a whole grain full of vitamins, minerals, fiber, it uh, cooks really fast and um, it is the closest thing in the plant world to a perfect protein. A perfect protein being something like turkey or um, meat eggs, fish, any of those things. Um, it has almost the entire um, panel of amino acids, so eating this will give you extra protein. Okay, quinoa. Ta-da! I'm going to dump it into my turkey and veggie mix here. And mix this up. So this in and of itself is a delicious, um, I guess you could call it like a stir fry. Uh, I would increase the veggies because it's, it's protein carb based at this particular moment, but our peppers are gonna throw that off. I think we're gonna have some extra uh, filling left, which means that this could go into a soup. This could go over a bowl of greens um, with some extra beans. I don't know, there's lots of options. Having something like this, uh, a little bit of extra, resulting in another meal for later is always a nice thing. All right, so let's finish our assembly. I'm gonna just turn my 
my oven to broil because I'm going to broil these to finish them off. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them in the uh, comment section below the video. And if I can see them, I will answer or uh, one of my colleagues who I believe are watching right now will also be able to answer. So I'm just flipping my peppers over. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. It's important to sing while you're cooking. It makes everything taste better. Um, see, here we go. All right. So now this is actually the trickiest part of making this dish. And that's saying something. It's trying to get the filling into the pepper without spilling the entire thing all over your kitchen. You know, nobody really likes cleaning off a stove top, I don't think. So, oop, and here we go, spilling it already. I am just gonna scoop my yummy, because it smells delicious, uh, turkey quinoa carrot, Southwestern spiced medley, is that what we want to call it? Medley? Into, <laughs> oh boy, into my peppers. And try to keep it from falling all over the tray. So these by themselves are a great meal. I normally like to serve them to my family with um, some sort of like a green salad or some sauteed greens or um, my, my uh, almost two year old son loves green beans at the moment. So big pile of green beans just to again, incorporate as many vegetables as we can because we're trying to balance our meals. And I know it sounds funny to say you need to add more and more and more vegetables to balance it, but you do. And I'm spilling. That's okay. But a side of something green, especially with these pretty red peppers, will help to make sure that you're getting even closer to that goal of balanced meals to balance your blood sugar. Okay, whoops. Yep. This isn't, um, <laughs> this isn't the prettiest job I've ever done. It's all right though. Nobody can see except for all of you. <laughs> okay. It's gonna taste good. there. And we're going to stick them under the broiler for just a minute. Well, maybe two minutes. Let that cheese melt down, golden brown, and then voila, you have a meal start to finish in less than half an hour. Well, maybe half an hour, including cutting things up. Okay, so can you see? Let's see. Oh, Hello, pretty peppers, all stuffed with yumminess. Um, oh, I just saw as the recipe on, on Community Serving's website. It is gonna be posted at the in the comment section below this video, um, right at the end. It should be posted um, there. Goal number two is to try to make sure that you don't spill cheese all over the baking sheet because you want the cheese to be on the pepper and not attached to the baking sheet, right? Because uh, we can't, I mean, I guess you could, you could scoop it up off of the, the baking sheet, but that, that defeats the purpose of it being part of the meal. Oh dear. Okay. So, here we are. Oh, I meant to mention too, if, if you don't like quinoa, you don't have to. If you don't have quinoa available, you don't have to use it. Try brown rice, 
try um, bulgur wheat, try millet. You could even sub in um, lentils instead. That would be yummy as well. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stick this beautiful, delicious mess in the <laughs> oven under the broiler. Woo. Maybe not right on the boiler. There we go. And give it a second to come together, and then we'll pull it out and have a peek. But let's take one second while we're waiting. If you have any other questions, please um, don't hesitate to post or post them, and I'm happy to answer it. Um, approximately how many grams of carb per serving? It is, or somebody just asked the, the um, carbs per serving in this dish. I don't remember, but on the recipe, the second page of the recipe, there is a, a food label that will have that exact amount. I'm pretty sure it's like, I think it's 26 or 27, if I remember correctly, for one of the, um, one of the peppers. And so then if that was, if you had that and you added some sort of non-starchy vegetable side to the dish, you're gonna be full and have um, a pretty good low carb um, portion meal. So just to recap, while our cheese is melting, um, trying to balance blood sugars is something that we should all be thinking about because Diabetes and prediabetes is very prevalent in the United States. So if we can make any small changes to help us get there, or not get there, avoid getting there to diabetes or prediabetes, that would be fantastic. Really important way to do that is to think about how you're balancing your meals, making sure that half of your meals are made up of some sort of non-starchy vegetable. And again, that means all of those vegetables, there's tons of them out there, that do not include potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, peas, um, what else, parsnips, winter squashes. So um, any of the other vegetables out there, load them in, lots and lots and lots of them. Remember, frozen is totally fine as long as it doesn't come with another with a sauce already added to it. Canned is also something that's fine. Um, if you can find a canned vegetable with no added salt, that's ideal. If it has salt added to it, try to rinse it off. Pick the low salt or no salt out options, okay? But back to our plate, half of our meal being non-starchy vegetables and then the other half being split between some sort of protein and some sort of starch. If you can pick a whole grain, that's gonna be even better for you because the whole grains help to um, slow down the release of the glucose into your bloodstream and so that keeps your blood, your blood glucose levels um, more stable for a longer period of time. And that's what we're trying to do. Going back to what I was saying before, if this way of eating is just so foreign to you that it seems like you know, impossible, try small little changes, okay? If you're not used to eating a non-starchy vegetable at a meal, add one in. It doesn't have to be the whole half of a plate to begin with. You can start with a quarter of a plate. You can start with a third and then move up to a third and a half, you know, and you know, incrementally make it larger and larger. Those are the things that are gonna make a big difference in the long run. Getting those vegetables in, thinking of those vegetables as something that you can do now to make sure that you are healthy later on, or if you have health problems that you're uh, facing right now, thinking that those vegetables are gonna be something that can certainly help you. Um, now, all right, oh yeah. These look fantastic. And you will be able to see that I made a big old mess on my plate or on my pan. So let's take a peek. All right. Yum, yum, yum are turkey quinoa stuffed bell peppers. I hope that you all enjoyed the class, that you maybe got some new information, maybe feel inspired to make some changes, um, and if nothing else, I enjoyed trying this dish. Um, if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to post them. I'll check back later and I can always answer. Uh, and thanks so much for joining. Have a great day. Bye.